Hi everyone and welcome to A-Level Biology with Miss Estrick. However, this video is not on biology, it's an exam technique video on revision timetables, looking at how and why to use them. And there's a link in the description to access the template I'll be using today. Now, if you want to jump straight to that section, have a look at the time codes and you can head straight there. If not, first of all, let's go through why revision timetables are actually really, really helpful. Even though I know many students say they don't like them because they find them hard to follow, there are so many benefits. So first of all, it makes sure you revise all the content in time. If you actually have a plan and the schedule, you won't accidentally miss a topic. It also makes sure that you use your time efficiently and that you are revising for long enough each day rather than just each day thinking, I'm just going to revise biology all day um, and I think I've done enough, so I'm going to stop now. And we'll come to look at more at that later on. It also means that you can have your breaks without feeling guilty at all, assuming you are one of the people that might feel guilty for not revising at any point in the day. So if you plan in your breaks, when you do have a one or two hour break, it's completely guilt free. It also means that you can dedicate more time to the topics you need to improve on the most. It can motivate you and it is really satisfying when you do get to the end of the day and you can tick off that you've successfully completed all the revision of that day. And it also makes sure that you aren't wasting time each day thinking about what should I revise, what activity should I do. So let's have a look at how you should start to plan your revision. So the first thing to do to make sure you are being efficient with your time is to identify which subject and which topic you need to improve the most. So think about which tests did you score lowest in and perhaps which topics do you find harder or what skills do you find harder. Then you can set some smart targets on how to improve. And I have got a video up here that looks at setting smart targets and identifying which subjects you need to improve on. So you might find it helpful to look at that first. One way you can do this is maybe come up with a table before you make your revision timetable and just list all the topics that you think you find harder, or it could be skills, say what the issue is, and then when you come to your revision timetable, instead of just saying revise biology, you can actually pick out, you're gonna spend an hour revising DNA replication, making flashcards on what the enzymes do, and therefore you've really been specific to help you improve the key areas. Final thing is, a lot of people find they don't like revision timetables because they're too constricting and you change what you want to do as you progress through your revision. So for that reason, I always say only write one week at a time. And you might have two weeks school holidays or you might have two weeks study leave. So just write the first week and then review how you did. And from that, you can then create your second week of revision. So if we just have a look at how long you should be revising for each day. Here is some research on over 400 year 12 and year 13 students. And it's looking at what their final grade was compared to how many hours they worked outside of lessons per week. And probably unsurprisingly, the students who attained the lowest grades, they stated that in addition to their lessons, they would spend on average three hours independently working per week and that is for all of their subjects so by that we mean homework consolidation and revision the students that were scoring the highest grades so a's and a stars they were doing 20 hours per week on top of their lessons so what that means then when it comes to study leave or revision over the holidays because you're not in normal lessons the recommended number of hours to plan to revise for is six hours a day if you're studying for your GCSEs and eight hours a day if you're studying for your A-levels. Now, if you aren't doing those two exams, GCSEs are the exams that you sit when you're age 15, 16. A-levels are 17, 18. So you can just look at the equivalent for whatever exams you might be taking. So that is quite a lot, but I'm going to go through my timetable template here just to show you how I've designed it to hopefully make it a bit more manageable for you. 
So first thing is I always try and stick to a school day or what might be similar to a typical school day. Now I've actually pushed this back a bit later than my school starts and you can tweak this as well. If you know that you don't actually work particularly well in the morning, you might want to push this back by an hour or two and then just shift the whole timetable by two hours. But here are the key things. First of all, you only ever have two hour chunks before you have a break, which is at least 20 minutes long. So you only have to focus for two hours. In addition to that, you will only spend one hour on any one topic and then you get a five minute break. And that could be to go to the bathroom, get a drink, quickly check your phone, and I do mean quickly, and then get back to doing one more hour. I've also made sure that there is a long lunch break so you do have enough time to have lunch and maybe watch something on the telly just to relax and reset. And again, in the dinner slot, shift it for whenever you would typically have your dinner. But I've given two hours here or just under two hours. So you do have a really decent break before you then have to carry on. And this is designed for the A-levels because it is eight hours in total. If it is GCSEs, then you only have to do six. Um, so you can look at which two slots you want to cut out. The other thing I've mentioned here is for each week, you should be having two rest days and you can time that around any social events you might have um, or you might want to have it the weekend as normal. But on a rest day, you should still be doing two to four hours of work just instead of the eight or if you're GCSEs instead of six hours. So that is making sure you are doing enough and then it's thinking about what you're actually going to be putting into each of these slots. So you need to be stating what the subject is, the topic, and you might briefly mention the activity. So for example, Monday morning, we might be doing biology, DNA replication, enzyme flashcards. So that then means when you come to do this revision, you aren't wasting time thinking about which topic shall I look at? Where am I up to? What activity shall I do? You've already invested the time beforehand to completely plan this out. So when you do come to a revision, you can be really productive. So those are my top tips for the revision timetable. There is a copy of this on my website, msestrick.com, and you can find that in the um, description below. So it is difficult to stick to them sometimes, but hopefully having those breaks within them will make it more manageable. And it is boring. I hate revision. I really hated it as a student, but the payoff is so big. So really think about what your goals are, why you want to achieve highly, what you want to get from this and use that as your inner motivation to try and stick to your timetable.